When questioned about why the duo targeted 66 year old Lawrence Hare, the detective revealed Matthews said they wanted to quote, kill a white person, end quote. You know, and for them to say it, they felt like killing a white person. I mean, that's that's so wrong, you know, and and I and I, I want justice for Peanut. I want justice for him. All right, guys. So we got to talk about a story that once again, you're not going to hear in the mainstream liberal media because it doesn't fit the narrative, even though they really want to have the race conversation. They really want to talk about race and race relations in this country. However, there are some conversations about race that they simply do not want to have. And this is the second time in the last few days that I have covered a story about a racially motivated murder that the mainstream liberal media will not cover because you guessed it again it does not fit the narrative and this time we have a tragic story out of kenner the town of kenner louisiana about the murder of mr lawrence her who was killed in what police are calling a drive-by assassination by two thugs uh, by the name of Maurice Holmes and Todd Matthews because allegedly they just wanted to murder a white man. Yes, they just wanted to murder a white man and they decided to just pick any white man and it just so happens that this white man was outside his home installing a mailbox and these two lunatics decided to shoot him and kill him in a drive-by assassination. A maintenance worker in Kenner may have been racially motivated. That is according to a detective who testified at a hearing today. Yeah, Lawrence Hare was killed while installing a mailbox for a rental home that he maintains. And Erica Ferrando has been following us the story, following the story for us. She's joining us live from the Kenner Police Department with new information. Erica. Katie Therese, it's almost been one month now since Lawrence Hare was shot and killed while working maintenance outside of a home in Kenner. Now the suspects were found this same day and I just spoke with Kenner Police Chief Keith Conley to learn a little more about the possible motive. Kenner Police Chief Keith Conley says it's possible the suspects accused of fatally shooting 66 year old Lawrence Hare while he was installing a mailbox could face hate crime charges in addition to the first degree murder charges. Tuesday, the lead detective shared more details on the possible motive at a probable cause hearing. Through some of the confession of Taj Matthews, who uh, admitted to taking part in a homicide that they did uh, want to commit a murder that day and specifically uh, they've ruled out Hispanics and they said it was going to be a white person. Uh, within a couple blocks of their residence, or their starting point, they did find uh, Mr. Herr out working on a mailbox doing what he does and, and shot him in the back. Police say Hare was working maintenance at a home on Georgetown Drive when 23-year-old Taj Matthews and 25-year-old Maurice Holmes drove by in this silver Mercedes and shot Hare in the driveway. Three hours later, detectives found the Mercedes, then arrested Matthews and Holmes on a charge of first-degree murder. We spoke with Hare's girlfriend over the phone after the hearing. They took my friend away from my best friend, my everything. You know, and for them to say it, they felt like killing a white person. I mean, that's... That's so wrong, you know, and and I and I, I want justice for Peanut. I want justice for him. I want them to, you know, lock them up and throw it away the key. That's what I want. The defense attorneys questioned the clarity of the surveillance video, the timeline, and the level of planning that goes into a first-degree murder charge. But Tuesday, the court found probable cause to hold the defendants as charged with first-degree murder. If it does uh, render a verdict of a first-degree murder, uh, I would be advocating for the death penalty. And again, the suspects are being held without bond. Now, the defense attorneys are still trying to have the bond lowered. When asked for a statement after the hearing, they said they had no comment. Yeah, so you guys seen that, you heard that. This is the second time, the second time I've covered in a story about somebody that happens to be black, that happens to be a so-called person of color, hunting down and killing people because they're white because of their skin color. And if these men are guilty, then yes, put them in the chair, right? If they're guilty, that's exactly what they deserve. Again, I, I, I feel terrible for 
Mr. Her's family, okay? Apparently, his nickname was Peanut, so I'm going to call him Mr. Peanut. I feel bad for Mr. Peanut's family. I feel bad for his girlfriend. Um, you know, he had, it seems to me, again, a, a beautiful girlfriend um, who cared about him a lot. Uh, clearly, she is sad and upset that this happened, something that shouldn't have happened. But again, to me, um, I'm noticing what appears to be a pattern, okay? What we're seeing here, which is something that, again, the mainstream liberal media doesn't want to talk about, is that you're seeing these racially motivated hate crimes. If you want to call it a hate crime, I know some people have an issue with calling stuff hate crimes, but if you want to call it that, again, this is a cold-blooded murder as well, too, obviously. We're seeing these racially motivated murders go in a direction that the mainstream liberal media, again, they don't want to talk about. Why is it that we're willing to have this race conversation, but we don't want to have it about what, to me, appears to be a much bigger problem than the conversation that they really want to have, right? The conversation that they want to have is about white on black, okay? But they don't want to have a conversation about black on white, okay? Which, I mean, this meme right here kind of shows you everything that you need to know, okay? Um, as Ann Wilkes posted this graph, of some Bureau of Justice Department statistics about crimes, right? <laughs> Interracial violent crimes, right? And as you can see here, this meme highlights something that, again, is a very real phenomenon. How the media focuses on white on black crime, but compared to black on white crime, um, doesn't really seem to be that much of a problem, right? Does not seem to be that much of a problem. They don't really want to talk about it, okay? They also don't really want to talk about Hispanic on white crime. OK, or anything like that. But they really want to talk about white on black, which, again, seems to be not that much of an issue. And if you point this out, OK, um, the left people like this guy and Rupar, who's going to is going to say you're racist. Right. Says Elon Musk is out here point posting crude racism. Right. Crude racism for simply acknowledging facts. Right. Because facts are racist. AOC as well, too. OK, she says. At this rate, he's going to be begging for my pillow ad buys in no time. <laughs> because again, facts are racist, right? Facts are racist. Absolutely amazing stuff. Now, some people say, well, you shouldn't use the national victimization surveys because they're unreliable, right? They're unreliable. People can just say whatever. <laughs> okay. All right, cool. Well, let's, let's talk about murder then, right? Let's talk about these statistics here from the FBI. Right, we have black on white murders. Okay, this is the race of the offender. This is the race of the victim, where where it's known. Okay, black on white, race of the offender, black, race of the victim, white, five hundred and thirty-three. Okay, race of the offender, white, race of the victim, black, two hundred and forty-three. Now, white folks make up what sixty plus plus percent of the population. Black people only make up 13%, if that. But we have more black-on-white murders in this country than we do white-on-black murders. Again, they'll tell you that facts are racist, right? Just pointing this out is racist, okay? And they're going to say, hey, because I'm a black person pointing this out, I'm a sellout, I'm a Tom, I'm all type of racial slurs for simply just stating facts, right? Facts. Again, I got questions because if this was the other way around, there would be protests and riots everywhere in the streets and the media would be asking questions about who's radicalizing these individuals. But again, we should be asking some of these same questions in this circumstance. Who is radicalizing these individuals? Who is radicalizing black people to go out here and to indiscriminately hunt down and kill white folks? Why is the mainstream liberal media not having that conversation? Because we know if it was the other way around, they would be saying, who is radicalizing whites, right, to go and kill blacks? But again, when it happens in a way that doesn't fit the narrative, crickets, silence. They don't really want to talk about it. They don't really want to discuss it. It's almost as if white lives don't matter, right? White lives don't matter. And let's not forget to mention, black lives don't matter either if they're 
taken at the hands of a criminal who happens to be black, right? Or not white, okay? So I want you guys to understand, white lives don't matter no matter what, right? White lives just don't matter, okay, according to the left. Black lives only matter if taken by a white individual. This is the country that we're living in, guys. We need to be having a conversation about who is radicalizing these people. Why in the world would these people want to assassinate, to hunt down and kill a white person for being white? Why would they be motivated to do that? Is it because they're being told that the country is systemically racist? Is it because they're being told that the white man is inherently evil? Is it, being, is it because they're being told that the cause of all their problems is the white man and that, again, the, the white man is, is the reason why black people are suffering in this country? Is it because they're being radicalized by the mainstream liberal media and the Democrat Party? Yeah, I think so, right? I, I, I really do believe that that is what's happening. Whether it be incidents like this, you have the Roe v. Wade riots, you have the BLM riots, you have the Antifa riots, the left-wing liberal media. And the Democrat Party is radicalizing people in this country. And quite honestly, um, that, in my opinion, if you want to talk about domestic terrorism, okay, left-wing extremism, whether it be through radicalization or through their policies, their soft on crime policies more specifically, is the biggest, most dangerous threat to this country when it comes to people's lives. More lives are lost at the hands of left-wing extremism Either via policy or via just, again, lunatics like these people right here who are probably racially radicalized. More lives are lost because of left-wing policies and ideology than anything in this country, right? But all they want to talk about is so-called white supremacy. Oh, you white supremacy is the white man, right? They, they even tried to make the, the, the Mexican shooter, uh, mass shooter out there in Texas. Oh, he's, he's a white supremacist. Which, I mean, hey, who knows? Maybe he could have some white supremacist belief, but I'm just saying. They want to put a laser focus on those stories that fit the narrative, right? Or at least they try to make fit the narrative as best as they can. But when it comes to stories like this of shutting clothes, hey, these guys admit it. We killed this person because he was white. Fixed his mailbox. We pulled up, assassinated him in a drive-by shooting because he's white. Crickets. You won't hear anything about it. We won't be having a race conversation about, well, are, are white people under attack, <laughs> right? Do we need to worry about that? Is that something that we need to have a conversation about? Second time in the last few days that I've covered a story like this, a racially motivated murder in which a white person, white men, specifically a white man or white men lost their lives at the hands of some radicalized extremists. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.